All right, this video is going to go over the tricky circumstance of when you can get vertical or horizontal IS or LM curves. And the whole trick here is to remember that the IS and the LM equations depend on both Y, GDP, and little i, the income, or the interest rate. So the IS depends on Y and little i from the C plus I plus G potentially plus net exports equations. So C, consumption, is always going to depend on Y, the marginal propensity to consume and that sort of thing. But investment can depend on Y or little i or perhaps neither. And that's going to change the shape or the slope of our IS curve. Same in the LM equation. Typically the LM equation depends on Y and little i. We have this M over P equation, the money supply divided by the price level equals the liquidity preference or demand for money, which is a function of GDP, Y, and little i, the interest rate. And because it's a function of both of these, we have this upward sloping LM curve. So if we don't have the downward sloping IS curve and the upward sloping LM curve, it's because one of those curves isn't dependent on either Y GDP or little i, the interest rate. So if the IS curve is not dependent on the interest rate, so investment doesn't change as the interest rate changes, which is weird but possible, then you're going to get this straight up and down vertical IS curve because no matter what the interest rate is, investment and GDP is going to be the same. So there's some value for GDP that the IS curve always holds for for any interest rate. So if you have an equation for investment, say it's equal to 3y, or investment is just equal to 500, and you don't see the interest rate in here, just investment equal to something, then you're going to get this vertical straight up and down IS curve. For situation two, we have our downward sloping IS curve, but we have our vertical LM curve. So here, the LM equation is not dependent on the interest rate. So we would have M over P equals L Y with no little i in that equation. So the amount of money demanded only depends on the GDP level. So if GDP changes, then we're going to have to see a change in either the money supply or the price level, and that's going to cause a shift in our LM curve. Finally, situation three, we have the LM curve is not dependent on Y. So we get this horizontal LM curve, and that would be if we had something like M over P equals L as a function of the interest rate only. So no matter what the level of GDP is, people are going to demand the same amount of money and they only change the amount of money they demand if the interest rate changes, which will cause a shift in our LM curve up or down. And so you can see in these scenarios that they have different implications. Like for this horizontal LM curve, if we see a shift in the IS curve, then the magnitude of the change in real GDP is going to be huge. It's going to be equal to the amount of the shift because we see no change in the interest rate because people don't change their demand for money based on changes in GDP, only the interest rate. Same thing here with this vertical IS curve. If we institute monetary policy, all it does is change the interest rate and has no effect on GDP. And here, if we change the IS curve, say through fiscal policy, then we see no change in GDP, only a change in the interest rate, because people's preference for money only depends on GDP. So the interest rate can fluctuate up or down, and that has no effect on people's demand for money. And so the interest rate just rises and investment falls by an equal amount equal to 
uh, that change in the IS curve. So depending on these sensitivities in the vertical or horizontal scenarios, granted they're unique cases, you can have interesting outcomes for your monetary and fiscal policy.